Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out my videos. Before we start today's video, I'd first like to invite you, if you just found this channel and you have not subscribed yet, please take a moment to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that notification button so that that way you get notified of every video that I put. Next, if you have subscribed, then please kindly consider hitting that super thanks button or maybe joining the channel to help support the channel. If you don't want to join, uh, support me here on YouTube, then you can always go to buy me a coffee and you can sign up for one of the tiers over there. Today's video is going to be a little bit uh, different in the sense of I'm not doing a review. Uh, what I'm doing is I am going to, I've gotten asked uh, by some of my subscribers uh, to do a video on installing what I use. And they want me to see how I would set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Arch Linux, but I'm doing the actual Arch installer script through an arch iso that i've downloaded and then i'm going to actually go through with setting up uh the i3 windows in it and uh, window manager in it and uh the programs that i use in it and uh customizing it and setting it up to be riced so to speak the way that i like it so that's a series that we're going to do today we're going to do the actual arch install uh, from doing the, uh, the launching the ISO to actually installing Arch through the script, setting up all the stuff that we have to, and then uh, a few extra programs or apps that are packages actually, uh, in, uh, packages in it, and then we'll actually have our base system set up. Then part two will be where we actually start implementing, you know, like configuring key, bindings, uh, certain programs to start on startup, uh, and uh, whatever else we get into in there. And then eventually we'll get into the actual theming of. One thing that I want to mention before we actually go into the actual install is that the install part is the only part that's going to be different on how to do it if you do your Arch install, whether it be through like... Uh, Arco Linux or Endeavor OS or any other Arch based system that does the Calamars installer, that's going to be different for you in that aspect. But as far as installing Arch and then turning around and setting up i3, it's going to use the same files, it's going to use the same keyboard combinations and such, unless you're using Arco Linux. If you're using Arco Linux, he has his own config file completely set up. This is for vanilla i3 and vanilla arch so to speak so you can make it what you want if you install somebody else's arch based uh distribution and install i3 on it uh you are going to get their customized version if they maintain a window manager spin in their repositories if not like endeavor os uh, Arch Linux, uh, those guys, if you install the i3 window manager through the Pac-Man, then you're going to get this exact same setup, what I'm getting ready to install. It's going to be what's in the Arch repositories. So that being said, understand that's where the differences come in. That's the, the only differences. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here, as you can see, I have spun up my Arch installation here. Go ahead and, uh, we're going to uh, let it do its boot thing. We're going to hit enter to boot into it. Takes it a few seconds. As it would with any, you know, standard installation. And this is it. It's going to run its little thing, you know, load its kernel modules, all that good stuff. And this is what you're met with. You get the root prompt so here at this point is where people tend to get lost and what 
used to be is you'd have to start typing in command lines one to set up your internet network collect your time your ntp uh for the the time protocol you know network time protocol all that good stuff well arch uh about a year ago created the arch install script which uh is amazing uh as you can see for wi-fi you can authenticate the wireless network using the iwctl right there whatever and um also you can go to the installation guide so but either way uh what we're going to type is simply arch install and it's going to launch their installer it's going to set up and test your internet and do all that for you so here having having launched into our installer this is what it looks like it's it's not like it, it's 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 kind of in cursor style but it's it's a little bit bigger and easier to read it doesn't open up inside of a terminal window it opens up full screen so that's what's nice and the way you maneuver it is you go up and down to change the different things uh to select it to change it you hit enter and then of course you can you know go up and down with your arrow keys so the keyboard is set to U.S., which is fine. English language is set fine. So the mirror region. Now, this is where we're, where we're going to do. We're going to hit enter into here. And this is going to give you all the different regions that you want. So basically, I could search and then hit U.S. Oh, well, probably not USA. So then let's type in forward search and then U United, U and I United. And I got United Kingdom or United States. I want the United States. I'm going to hit the space bar. Oh, no, hit enter to select it. And there it is. So my local encoding is going to be UGF-8. We're going to leave that there. Uh, if we enter it, you can see where you can go to find whatever it is that you want. UTF-8 is what I want. So I'm going to leave that there. For drives, this is going to be your partitioner. Now, this is going to open up like a guided F disk where it does, like Calamari's, it does your own... Thing where it selects the hard drive that's available and then you can either manually partition it or you can let it do its own guided setup its own automatic setup so to speak right now what it's doing is detecting my hard drive and it's found my block device being dev vda1 20 gigabytes which i've given it you don't need a lot of room for art so i am going to hit enter on that now it's going to ask me uh the actual disk layout i'm going to hit uh, enter on that and then this is where it offers you to you know to you can manually do it which is the top one which is wanting you to set up you know the EFI uh, partition the swap partition and then the root partition uh, right now what I'm going to do is I am going to select wipe all uh, on this one because this is going to want to do it kind of fast to set it up for basic use uh, also it's going to ask me the file type that I want which is going to be btrfs so I'm going to select that instead of ex. You could select ext4, whichever one you want. I just use btrfs because of the added compression. Uh, yes, we're going to do the defaults. And yes, we want the btrfs compression. And so now our disks are completely set up. Disk encryption is just like, you know, any other Calamaris installer. If you want to encrypt the entire disk first, then you can do this and set that. But I'm not going to. The boot letter, the bootloader, I could change from system D, boot control, or, which is what it normally comes as a standard, or I can do Grub. So, would you like to use Grub as a bootloader instead of? Yes, I would love to do that. So now I've got regular standard grub install. Swap is turned on, so there is a swap turned on. Uh, the host name is going to be Arch Linux. The root password, we're going to have none, and we're going to set up a user account. So now we're going to set user password. We're going to add a user. I'm going to enter the username, which you can enter your name or whatever username you want. Then I'm going to set up our password. And do we want it to have sudo? Yes, we do. We want it to have sudo privileges. And now it's done. So now we're going to do is confirm and exit. Profile. Now this is where we select the type of profile for the Arch build that we're getting ready to build. Do we want a desktop environment, a minimal, a server, or exorg, which is just the exorg and graphics drivers only. I am going to select the desktop profile. And then we're going to select I3.
Then we're going to select our graphics driver, which is going to be uh, I'm on AMD. So I'm going to select that. But if you have NVIDIA, then you could choose between the proprietary or the actual, uh, what you call it, um, uh, open source, the Novus. So I'm going to hit ATI and AMD. For audio, this is where you can go from pipe wire to pulse audio. I'm going to go ahead and install pulse audio. And then for kernels, now this is a key component here. You can switch your kernels. You can go from the regular standard Linux kernel to Linux Harden, LTS, or Zen. So I'm going to do the LTS uh, additional packages. Now this is kind of cool. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's go back here. There we are. We're at additional packages. Now, this is where, uh, depending on what it is of your desktop environment that you wanted to install is what you need to put here. If you're in a window manager, then the few things that you're going to want to put here are definitely a terminal and a web browser because an i3 window manager is or uh, any i3 window manager or any window manager is only going to install just the window manager. You're not going to get any terminal, any web browsers, or anything like that. Everything else, once you have the terminal and the web browser, that's the minimal that you need so that that way you can actually implement command line co you know, comments and you know stuff to use like Pac-Man to install other applications and also your browser to look up certain things that you may need. So in that regard, we're going to do an, uh, an install of Firefox. Oops. Spell Firefox correctly, Alex. And then Alacrity for a terminal. Because I like, otherwise you could type GNOME terminal, you could XFCE terminal, whatever you want to put. You can, you can put it in there. And then you're going to hit Enter. So now it's going to verify that those are actually in the repos, and they are. So now we're going to do network configuration. With network configuration, I'm going to go down to Use Network Manager because it's the applet that will install and run whenever you have your window manager up and running. And then for the time zone, uh, here we're going to hit the forward slash, and we're going to search America. And then it's going to be forward slash. And then I'm on the West Coast. We're going to use Los Angeles. That's not where I live, but that is the time zone I'm going to use. We're going to use NTP, true, which is network time protocol. So it'll automatically sync. And then uh, optional repositories. Now, this is where you can enter like multi-lib or testing, which I'm not going to worry about any of those. Uh, multi-lib is for 32-bit. And then here you can save the configuration or you can just do the install. Some people like to save the configuration, but it erases once you restart anyhow. So it doesn't much matter because this is not a persistent uh, a uh, persistent uh, USB. However, if it were persistent, then it would save it and you'd be okay. So that saying, I'm going to hit install. And now it's going to show here that it's getting ready to format the hard drive. Once I hit enter, it's formatting the hard drive, it's doing its countdown, and then it's going to start doing its stuff to create the partitions and do what it does. Once this is done, I will resume the video. Still installing, as you can see, it's downloading all the packages and stuff and installing it. Okay, so I've finished doing all its stuff, so we are going to hit no for wanting to chroot into the desktop. So I'm going to hit no, and then we'll, uh, I'll pause it, and then we'll go from there. No. Oh, that's right. Installation is complete without error. So now we're going to reboot. So now you just type in reboot. And here we are into our light DM greeter. So now we have i3 installed. We're into our greeting menu. So now we have that installed. In the next video, we're going to log in, set up our config file, and we're going to go ahead and set up our modifier key binder. And then we're going to actually start... Uh, using it a little bit and setting up the auto resolution and all that good stuff. So if you have any ideas, thoughts, or questions, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Stay tuned for the next video. Until then, you guys keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay blessed. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.